Hey everybody, uh, welcome to week one of our new yeah. series called This Is It. And our goal uh, during the course of this three week series really is just to get everybody recentered and refocused um, on what our mission as Christians is, but I think even on a just like right. a more intimate level, what our mission as a church is. And so if you um, are a part of Community Life Church, we wanna be sure that at the end of this three weeks that everybody is yeah. crystal clear <laughs> that this is our number one priority. And yeah. so uh, this week in, in our services, we talked about uh, just the way that, that Jesus pursues us and, and wants to be in a relationship with us and how as believers, um, our, our primary mission yeah. is to introduce people to yeah. Jesus in the life that he gives us. If his primary mission was to seek and save that which was lost, then our primary mission yeah. by default becomes seek and save that Should which be. is lost. Yeah, right. Should be. But I, you know, one of the things that just kind of thinking through the sermon and, and everything else is it, it seems like we very easily get kind of off track. And it's not that we get distracted by bad yeah, things. Right. Uh, we just get distracted by things. What do you, like just kind of in your opinion, I know I haven't really right. prepped you with this question, okay. but what do you think it is that causes the church, and I'm just talking about just Christians, right. to so quickly lose, um, because right after somebody's saved, it's almost like they want to charge hell with a water oh, right. pistol. Yes, you know? of they course. want to tell everybody uh, about this new life that they found, but it, it seems like over a period of time, it's easy to become more institutional mm -hmm. and a little less or a lot less evangelistic. Mm -hmm. What do you okay. think it is that kind of moves us in that direction? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think some of it is part of just being human in that, in that you know, when something is new, it's really, really exciting. Yeah. And so I think there's part of that, and it can be new in any arena, not necessarily just your faith. So I think that's one of those things. And then I think secondly, you just kind of get you know get beaten down um, in in life, and and you get focused on kind of the wrong things, distracted, and really even kind of you know I don't want to you know do, you know bag on religion kind of thing that that's like really hip to do, but there is a little bit of you kind of get caught up in you know religious type living, you know, kind of mm -hmm. Christianese. It's like you're learning a new language and things. And, and so there becomes like these new things that are super important when what you had experienced initially was just salvation. And so salvation was the important thing. So you're looking for how you save, how you, you know, help everyone else get saved, not how do you help them understand the Bible or how do you, you know, organize your small groups or whatever. And there's nothing wrong with those things. Mm -hmm. They just kind of distract us over time, I think is probably the yeah. primary deal as to why it tapers off. Some people though, never even get it. What do you mean by they never get it? They never even start that way. Some people just, you know, got saved to get out of a jam. Oh, I got you. And didn't really ever tell anybody about it. And so, so there's some of those too. So I don't want to act like every person just sure. has that normal you. trajectory. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, the, the Great Commission, and it's one of the, the passages we read on Sunday, says, Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. And then he says, go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And then he said, and behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Mm. Um, you know, one of the things that I hear a lot, and I've felt this before, and I still feel it on a fairly mm. regular basis, is, okay, I realize this is what I've been commissioned to do, <laughs> but what if somebody asks me a question that I don't know the answer to? What if somebody... Right pushes back and I take it personally? Uh, what if somebody just says, I'm not really interested in your God? <clears throat> How do you counsel somebody, yeah. you know, that's in a group? So, so as everybody's in your group, right. I guarantee you there's somebody, there's yeah. multiple people sitting in your group right now that's going, yep, I can relate to that. One of the reasons that I find it difficult to share my faith is because I'm not exactly sure what my response would be if, if they ask any question or push back at all. What do you, what do you tell them in light of yeah. this text or yeah. in light of the, the gospel in general? Yeah. Well, well, first of all, this idea in our culture that you don't impose really anything upon anyone, and really that's kind of like the big giant no-no in every area. And so, so I get, and I understand, so I guess what, what mm -hmm. I'm saying is I understand why we're a little bit, you know, reluctant. But I would also say that, you know, that may be the depth of your persecution, which is really kind of funny yeah. when you're thinking, talking about, you know, being eaten by lions or having your child killed or whatever. It's like, it's like they said some mean things about me yeah. in the break room. But sometimes that happens yeah. and, and, and you have to kind of, you know, walk forward and move forward in spite of that. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I think that Jesus said he came to seek and save that which is lost. And then he ends his entire ministry 
you know, really here on earth by saying, man, this is what you've got to do. You've got to go and you've got to make disciples and you've got to be looking for people to bring inside of the family. I mean, that's really kind of his, his greatest, you know, mm-hmm. desire, and the, which brings the Apostle Paul to say, I have become all things to all men in order that some might be saved. Yeah, which I'm glad you brought that up because I was trying to figure out a way to kind of transition to my <laughs> next thought. It seems like a lot of church growth um, happens because people who are already churched become displeased with their church, yes, and right. so they, they hop yeah. over to another one or, or yeah. whatever else. And we, we've had people come to Sea Life from other churches, and we've had people leave Sea Life to go to other churches. So, they're and, we, and, we, and we bless them both yeah. ways. Yeah, we believe sure. they're either missionaries coming to us right. or going from us. Either one. We we're, don't own we're people. Yeah, right. they don't, people don't belong to of us. Of course. Um, but one of the things about I've become all things to all people so that, you know, people could be saved. Right, like yeah. I, I, my goal is... I, it feels to me like the church in general, maybe even some of these community groups, um, feel a little bit like, man, there's there's only certain places Christians can really exercise this evangelism muscle, you know, mm. and it's it's at yeah. a, uh, maybe at work or it's in your family or whatever else. And, and one of the things that we mentioned uh, on Sunday was, you know, there are a lot of different ways to reach people. Right. And some of the people that need to be reached are in places that the church historically yeah has moved away from being being a part of it. It's like, well, we can't get anywhere near a bar. Or we mm-hmm. can't get anywhere yeah. near, you know, these certain places where, where it, right. why do you think the church has tended to just kind of leave people alone that really maybe are the ones crying out the most yeah. to, to say, look, there's something missing in my life. And we've got the answer, but we're scared to go to those places. Yeah. We're scared to interact with those people. And I, I, you know, yeah. I think maybe Sunday we said something like go to a strip club ministry or whatever. You know, <laughs> and I, I kind of laugh about that, but at the yeah. same time, who is going? Who who is who is yeah. trying to to give those women or these men or whatever a, a glimpse of their value in Christ's eyes? Yeah. Um, because I don't know. What, yeah. what do you think the challenge? Well, is I there? mean, I, th- I think the the first thing is you you have to be intentional. I mean, that, that, that's really the thing. And I don't even necessarily, you, you, you do have to be intentional about where you go, but you also have to be intentional about what you do, when you end up, wherever it is that you end up. And I think both of those things are incredibly, incredibly important. It can be easy for churches to kind of turn inward, even for groups to turn yeah. inward, and to really just c- trying to think about how you know they can benefit themselves and really just kind of focus on, on getting those people that are already the most like them, the people that already speak that Christianese that right. I spoke of just a moment ago when in reality maybe the best thing is is to step outside and to recognize that Jesus said I I didn't come to the to the well I I came to the sick Mm -hmm. and and so we have to be intentional about looking for those people that are that are really hurting yeah I I just wonder I I think it'd be really cool to get feedback from groups uh, that if you in your group spent some time just saying hey over these next three weeks we're not trying to put God in a box but over the next three weeks we are going to pray for vision. We're going to pray for ideas, and we're going to pray that God yeah, would put us on mission, and and just throw out every idea, like regardless of how crazy the yeah, idea right. seems. At least, at least verbalize it and and get it out there that here here are places, here are ways, here here are means and methods or whatever else that we've never, as a church or as a community group, we've never leveraged yeah. those things, and and then you know maybe at the end of the three weeks that that we're able to say you know what our our core mission is to connect people right. to God yeah. and to one another. And, and you know, I don't know which comes first in those. I think yeah. sometimes you connect to people, then then you realize, oh, man, these people are, you know, they love God and they, God loves me. Sometimes people fall in love with God and then realize the people of God mm-hmm. are good too. Yeah. So, um, but maybe that's a challenge for your group that you could, you could spend some time thinking, praying about vision and mission. Uh, and then let us know what you come up with and, and just realize that, as a church, we yeah. we want to be able to celebrate the vision God gives you and the passion that you um, develop in that and the mission that you find yourself yeah. on. And more importantly, it seems that God celebrates yeah. that. Well, and you know, you've really got to believe it. I mean, yeah. that's part of the that's part of the issue too. I mean, you're not just a, a salesman selling a product that mm-hmm. you haven't necessarily bought into. And so, it's important to recognize that that um, that heaven is going to be a wonderful reward. But hell is going to be a really tough place of separation from God for all of eternity. 
And, uh, and, and maybe that's another discussion point that you could ask, why is it that we struggle to not only share it, but why is it that we struggle sometimes to believe it? And maybe it's because America is so uh, blessed and we live in such, you know, bounty. We joke about, you know, the banqueting feast. Mm -hmm. uh, when we go to Africa, we always yeah. joke about the fact that they're like, oh, this is a banqueting feast, uh, like heaven. You know, this is like heaven. Well, I mean, that doesn't mean anything to us because we could right. just head on down to, you know, CC's or Ryan's and get all that we want to eat. And so, okay, we might, we might come up with better. Texas Day, Fogo? There you Texas go, Fogo. Day, Brazil. There you go, yeah. Yeah, something like that. Big bucks. Uh, but, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> take, your, take your pocketbook. Yeah. But either way, but because we have stuff like that, we don't, we don't understand the beauty of heaven, nor do we really even preach a whole lot about the agony of hell. Yeah. And so maybe you could discuss those things and those theologies and why they make us uncomfortable and why we talk about them or don't talk about them. And yeah. I think that's important as yeah. well. Well, I, for me, just as kind of a closing thought in this really just kind of landed on my, my spirit. There's a chance that somebody who's watching this, um, you're, you're viewing Jesus kind of from a distance. Yeah. And even though you're in a community group or you went to church on Sunday, spiritually you feel at a distance because you know that your sin has separated you from God. And there's probably something in your head that's just going, you know what, I'm trying everything I know to do to get a glimpse of him mm -hmm. uh, and to see what he maybe could offer or whatever else. But there's also the side of you that's going that you feel yeah. like maybe you're a little too far mm -hmm. gone. I would just remind you that Jesus um, saw Zacchaeus and Zacchaeus was not a person in their culture that people liked and, and that Jesus should have associated with. And yet Jesus um, called his name and went to his house. And uh, you know, so, so maybe you're in this group today uh, hearing this because um, God wants to communicate to you that he values you and as a church, we want to say that this is this is it. This, this is our mission. Mm -hmm. It's to see somebody like you right. uh, find and, and 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 live in the grace of God and receive the grace of God made available through Christ. And How so, cool would it be yeah. if this was your tree? Yeah. I mean, if this is your moment when He calls out to your name, and if that happens, I hope that you'll share it with your group and let them know that you know what? Maybe this is Jesus calling to yeah, me. Yeah, for sure. So anyway, well, uh, we sincerely hope that you have a great discussion and uh, we'll look forward to week two yeah. that's coming up. This is gonna be a great series.